I'll try to keep it clean then. Overlays, you know, some stuff, okay. Yeah. Mm, yeah. Where are you streaming this, by the way? What is Twitch? Or whatever, video games, events, whatever. Alrighty. Fangled YouTube -y things. Such a are into. Right. Yeah. Lyric knows all about that. They do though. Yeah. Lyric's got all the cooties. You guys can hear oh, the TV no, in the background. Don't lean into us like that. Yeah, no, like, you're like launch at us or something. Near us. A little right. bit, but it's not like at all over. Is that the cooties? That's fine. Yeah, it's only a little bit while you're talking. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> Frosty, Frosty, you better, you better move away. You better move away uh, from her. So here's the problem. Uh, I, I'm trying to think of a way to redo this auction in a way that we can try to get confirmed bidders only. The problem is, we can't really know. If you donated before, like we gotta have Grant like on 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 like the the, the database searching. Greetings. Yeah, I had to fix my audio. Oh, hello there. I don't think I've talked to you before. Hey. Uh, I was in the channel. By the way, uh, can you hear me? Yeah, you're coming through fine. Okay, yeah, I was in the channel, but I couldn't hear anybody up until about a minute ago. Yeah.
Let me find our cats really quickly. That was quick. Uh, okay, so I'll be playing Felix. I am a uh, the wizard of the party. I am uh, how old am I? How old did I say? I'm a 17 year old human uh, who just uh, got kicked out of a university um, nearby in Franceport. Uh, I'm six foot tall, kind of lanky. 
pale skin, uh, shoulder length, uh, a little bit less shoulder length, brown hair. Overall, fairly nerdy appearance. I'm still wearing uh, my students' robes from the university. Uh, do you want to go to backstory detail or just like appearance and stuff? Okay, I'll just go for it. Okay, so just basic summary. Um, I was orphaned at a very young age. Um, grew up uh, nearby to the university. Saw stuff going on there. Got really interested. Um, ended up being adopted by a bookstore owner um, who serviced the uh, university students. Uh, was raised by him. Self-taught through a lot of the books that he had. Um, was sponsored through him to the university. Um, got a little ambitious, uh, pissed off a number of teachers, and got kicked out. Um, which leads me here to going out and trying to kind of prove myself. Okay. Well, I'm Radio. My character is Alan Beaumont. And uh, I'm a fighter right now. I'm aiming to go towards the show, uh, Cavalier class. I'm 20 years old. And my family was recently lost all their lands to a, uh, I'm a noble, and my family has lost all of their lands to a political dispute to a stronger family of nobles. Uh, I'm now on the run, uh, not exactly on the run, but exiled from my home land to the far to the south across the sea. And I have no family now. I have no backing of any sort, just my noble title to my name and my claim upon my family's land, and I'm hoping to someday get it back. So just wandering around in this country now, trying to get back on my feet, start building myself up. All right, uh, my character, his name is Cleese. Um, he is a um, war cleric. He got into trouble when he was um, a younger lad, oh, about six months or so ago when he was young. Um, he and he was a bullied as a kid there, and he ended up um, you know, being a bully himself a little bit when he grew up. He got into a fight in a bar and um, accidentally killed someone. So he was given a choice of either service in the army or hanging. And, of course, you can guess what he chose. Um, so he spent... Um, you know, five years in the army running a special team uh, flying company that gives support to flank units there or, you know, drop in enemy line scout and run back there. Um, he also did some medic work. And while working with the medics, he got into a um, group there that uh, were uh, cleric, but they were specializing in war. And so he decided at that point he was going to do that as well. And I'll, um, Towards the end of the war, his group was sent in to save a um, young noble from a, a little trip they took behind enemy lines, and he didn't want to do it. Um, they obviously, he took a group of 15 men in the lines. Only three came back, including the noble and himself. So he got a little disenchanted, and um, now he spends his time there you know, lamenting the loss of his company and his friends, drinking and hiring on to whatever caravan group will take him or adventuring group um, to get day by day. Uh, I play Brandigor, a druid, and he is uh, from the forest that we kind of start near uh, Donnerwood. A, he doesn't know his parents. Uh, he is has been raised by a treant. Um, and, uh, he has a brother who is a wolf. Uh, so obviously, it's not like a real brother, but um, he, he doesn't have. He doesn't know like his family or whatever. He doesn't even know if his family's still alive. Uh, and. Uh, I go to town every now and then, like maybe a couple times a year. Um, and I was in town. I heard uh, some, the, the last time I was in town, I heard some rumors about Knoll attacks. And 
so I went back to uh, talk to my uh, treant father, and he said, um, you know, basically, you're old enough now. Go, go help take care of that because uh, if it's a threat to the town, then it's a threat to the forest. So that's why I'm in town right now. Uh, yeah, pretty much. Yep. Um pretty much I'm just writing my equipment saying some quick goodbyes and uh, I'm also going to ask around a little bit just get the um, impression that some of the other people in the tavern and maybe my contacts around the town such as in the guard that I've been helping out with what they know about um, Mr. Sorry let me bring up his name again real quick uh, Augusta Uh, I'm just hanging out at the Leering Dwarf, um, just resting up on the road for a little bit. Um, as it does get closer, um, let's say like an hour, uh, he said he's coming evening. Okay, so about an hour before-ish, I'm going to... Uh, Two hours before ish, I'm gonna pop a mage armor on myself and uh, take a short rest using arcane recovery. Just kind of prepare myself uh, that way. Okay, uh, so I'm just trying to uh, gather information about uh, why I was sent here, these null attacks. Um, would I know uh, a good place, um, like the tavern or something like that, or town square that I could go to and just ask around? Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, I would try to find uh, someone with that information and uh, see if they could point me 
uh, in the in a direction that makes sense. Uh, I would ask because um, I I don't want to go hunt these things by myself. Okay, uh, I'll just walk up casually and uh, ask him, uh, say, uh, I was sent here to uh, gather some information about these null attacks and, and see if if y'all need help taking care of them. Dylan, apparently they're not hearing you on the stream. Yep. Oh, whoops, I just, uh, it's called whispered me. Uh, yeah, Dylan's mic is definitely muted or something. He has just no audio in the stream. You're hearing the rest of us, though? <clears throat> um. Weird. I almost talking for that.
Uh, time to test. Lots of time. Yep. I'm going to grab a drink. Hey, good idea. Hello, can I'll just be a backup streamer then. I'll just hop on right now. Good five minute bio break time. So, sorry that this is um I'll I'll let people know if Nick isn't going to. I'll temporarily mute myself so they won't hear me, but you'll hear me. Me. You hear me, they won't. If they're all if we're all jumping in here to try and help them out or something, I actually uses OBS all the time to shrink. Yeah, you might as well you might as well do the thing then. Actually no, I'll do it because I have the sixty FPS thing. And the full resolution, so it'll be nice here. Oh wait, do you act do you actually want us to stream for you? Like Oh hang on. What's going on? Sources and audio input. Uh, no, no, no. It's a mixer. So you have scene sources, mixer, scene transitions, and such, right? In the bottom. You should have a mixer there. You should see like a couple of audio bars, right? Do you not have a uh, microphone? Uh, is it your default, like in, uh, like in, not on OBS, but like in your uh, actual Windows, right? Could you click, uh, recording devices? Like, right click your little volume thing and then click recording devices. Is your, uh, is your headset microphone your default microphone? That's weird. You should not be having this issue. Okay, so you see, okay, so controls. You see settings there, right? On controls, the front further to the right. Technical difficulties. <laughs> right clicking uh, the audio section there, you should be able to you should be able to select um, a mic device there. See if you actually have uh, your microphone selected there. Okay, so does it actually does the bar actually show up now? Right, so we're live now. I just put it back to our screen. And you should be able to see everything. Yep. Can someone quickly do the dice roll? On chat. In game chat. Yep, it's good. Okay, well. We can see everything. Okay, so. Nick, could you give me a second? Uh, so, on the settings, you do have a. Your microphone selected in the the mic auxiliary audio device, right? All right. Yep, I'm good now. Okay, Should you got good. it working. Okay, good shit. I think yeah, OBS can. OBS is like it's a little yeah. harder to work than XSplit, but it's way oh. better. Dude. Like it's really good to actually learn how to use OBS. Yeah, uh, no problem. Later on, I, just, I didn't realize that the input from me and the 
desktop audio were two separate things. So it's like, oh, okay, I'm talking. Oh no, that they're they're, they're they're yeah, they're always separate because that way you can uh make yourself or the desktop uh you can change those volumes individually because it's quite annoying if you change if you have to change both at the same time because then if the ratio is fucked up anyway, all you're doing is changing the overall volume of the stream, you know? Right. This Great. gives you proper control over everything. Well, all right, so good to go now. Is everybody uh people listening? Ooh. Back. Right, I'll, I'll I can, he I can hear yeah. you guys. I'll, I'll jump off well, the table so I can just hear the stream. Alright. So, sorry about that. Anybody who's actually uh, watching this. So, nice. so just to, to recap, what I thought you could hear but didn't hear is uh, a scene where uh, Alephim's character, Branagor, He's a furbold that lives in the forest. He came into town, and he was looking for a uh, like a guard or captain, somebody that he could talk to about a knoll problem. There's been a knoll problem in the region, and him living in the forest, he kind of heard from his uh, treant like mentor uh, that something was going on, and if it's a threat to the town and the region, it's a threat to the forest. So essentially take care of it. So he was on his way. He, you know, very quickly, uh, being a small town, found his way and went to the, like the uh, HQ of the uh, watch, uh, talked to a, a gentleman who ran inside. And that's kind of where we left off with the audio issues. I think that I think that covers it because the other stuff was mostly uh, everybody talking, describing their characters, and saying what they were gonna do in the downtime. So, yeah. So this um, the gentleman comes back, kind of points at you, and you see a uh, like a really brawny looking. Esque, like hooded, has a bow on her back. Um, clearly, the captain. You can see she she's just more adorned than the other soldiers, and she comes up to you. And yeah, how how can I help you? I heard you you were looking for me. Yes, uh, I'm from the forest down south. Uh, you might not know me. I come into town every now and then just to gather whatever I need. Uh, last time I was in town, I heard the, there was a null problem in the forest. Uh, I didn't think too much, of, or in the area, I didn't think too much of it, but uh, when I went back, I spoke to my father and uh, he wanted me to come help out. Uh, so I, I know I was just here a week ago, but I wanted to, I came back to see if I could help uh, assist with the problem. Uh, do y'all have any uh, any need for a um, fledgling druid? Well, we could always use a hand around here. That's for sure. Uh, yeah, I've, I've seen you around once or twice. Kind of hard to miss. Uh, as for uh, where where the knolls are, I mean, they they just kind of pop up randomly. It's just been plaguing from what I've heard uh, all the way up yeah, from Santa, Santa Abe, Fort Vignan, uh, Trials, even to Carmont. It seems to be a region wide epidemic, but we haven't had too much activity here per se, but a couple of them have, have drifted in. Usually no more than two or three at a time. Okay. Uh, do y'all have any parties uh, going out to uh, gather information as to maybe where their uh, uh, what would a knoll village be? A, a village? Um, it would be more like a pack. Okay. They're more of like um, they, they rove roam, I should say. Um, 
do have a scouting party. Um, we sent someone up to uh, Sandabe. Apparently they have a little more information up there. Um, they've been dealing with them pretty heavily. But besides that around here, um, again, we've just been keeping our eyes on the forests, on the boundaries, and seeing what we can see. We're a little short-handed here. I mean, it is a pretty small town. Okay, uh, well, if y'all need any help, I gotta break out of this Texan speak for when I'm talking as a druid. Uh, if y'all need any help, uh, just let me know. I'll be around, and uh, I'll, I guess I'll wait for her response, and then uh, if she doesn't have anything to say, I'll just uh, make my way into town. Appreciate it. Thank you. And uh, I know yeah, the guildmaster Augusto. He was looking for some some strong individuals. I guess his party ran into some gnolls. So you never know. He may have some more information if you wanna go down to the Leering Dwarf. It's usually where he stays. Okay. Uh, that was Augustus. Uh, Augusto. Yeah. Augusto. Okay. I, I think I remember him. Yeah, he's a pretty fancy chap, that one. Okay. All right, thank you. I will head that way. All right, thank you. Good luck. If you find anything of consequence, you let us know, all right? All right, uh, uh, I'm sorry I didn't catch your name. You're the captain of the guard? Okay, thank you, Captain Bellic. And what do, what do I call you? I'm known as Branigor in these parts. Branigor. All right. Well, be safe, Branigor. Good luck. All right, thank you. Uh, and then uh, after I walk out there, I'll just... Uh, I'll make my way to the Leering Dwarf. Is that what it was? Yes. Okay. Uh, I'll make my way over there and uh, just see, you know, whatever. See if I can find Augusto. Yeah, it's, it's simple enough. Um, and just because you've been to the town multiple times, um, it, it stands out based on the fact that the building itself is just like super. Everything else is like, you know, hand built, but, you know, in a hurry, more for um, functionality rather than being like an artisan work. And this building is the opposite. It's very, very fancy, very well done. So uh, it doesn't take you long to, um, to find it. Okay, uh, I'll walk in and just try to um, walk up to the barkeep. Is is there a barkeep right now? Yeah, you see, like, um, kind of a stereotypical, like, a portly uh, gentleman, dwarf. Um, he's got, like, a, a big red beard. And you see him just, he's just, like, wiping down a glass, and he puts one up, and he walks out back and comes out with a plate, gives it to somebody. Definitely uh, a little bit busier at this point. It's kind of like a late lunch hour. Okay, and would I would I recognize this as Augusto? Uh, the man at the bar. Uh, yeah. No. Uh, right now there are there's quite a few individuals uh, at the bar. Um, again, like I said, it's kind of like a lunch hour. Um, this is more like a fine dining kind of kind of place. It's really swanky, and uh, you do see, I believe, and just to clarify, so for Felix, you said he was hanging out at the at the Leering Dwarf. Would he still be down in like, the uh, gathering area, or would he be up in his room? 
Yeah, I wouldn't really be in the at the bar per se anymore. I might have like grabbed a table to the side, or if there's like a couch somewhere, I'm just like reading a book and waiting. Okay, so yeah, so uh, so for Felix, yeah, you see uh, this, you know, essentially gargantuan man. He's got a Yeah, I'm just kind of, like, curiously looking at him, because I'm guessing I haven't seen many Fearbowl, uh, however you pronounce that, Fireballs or whatever. Um, yeah, I'm not confronting him or anything. Uh, I might be kind of paying attention if he mentions, uh, once he mentions Augusto or anything, I might kind of perk up a little bit, but nothing more than that. asking around or how are you you're just looking around for some, someone who might fit his description yeah i would i would probably be pretty uh direct i would uh pro uh just walk up to the bartender and or whoever's serving and uh, uh yeah uh excuse me uh do you have a moment i know you're busy right now but uh i just wanted to ask you a question I spoke with Captain Belloc about uh, maybe assisting the town, uh, and she pointed me here to uh, see if I could speak with Augusto. I was wondering if he's uh, in right now. Is he busy, or is he, uh, or will I have to wait till later? Uh, he comes in and out. Uh, you may want to get with that chap over there. Uh, noticing, because I'm kind of trying to nonchalantly kind of, I'm nonchalantly kind of staring at uh, Brandagor. So when I get pointed at, I kind of give like an awkward, like, hey, you caught me staring at you, wave. Okay. Um, uh, I don't think I've described Brandagor, um. Uh... He he is tall. He's uh he well he is shorter for a fur bog, but he is still he's still seven feet tall. Um, he's about two fifty. So being seven feet tall and two fifty, it's still a little bit lanky, uh, for that height. Uh, he's most stuff about him uh, about him is uh, his form is a little bit elvish as far as like his ears, uh, his face uh, a little bit slender, and uh, but. Other than that, his nose is uh, not not like Rudolph bred, but uh, it's like uh, it's reddish, and his skin is uh, like cyan, um, a mix between uh, green and bluish kind of. And uh, his hair goes down just past his shoulders, and he's got brown eyes. So uh, that's about the rough. Uh, he does wear um, a deerskin cloak. Uh, very basic. He he basically made it himself, and uh, just leather armor, and uh, a quarter. St he does have a, a shield on his back and a quarter staff. Uh, so okay. if if uh, if Augusto kind of pointed me over to Felix, I would just uh, I I walk up to Felix and I uh, just ask uh, why. I'd start out by saying uh, I'd introduce myself first. Uh, I, I'd say I'm I'm Brandy Gore. Uh, Ty, uh, Felix. Well, I. Uh, uh, sorry. Oh no! Go ahead. Uh, I would I would say uh, I'm from the forest down south, and I spoke with the captain earlier, and. She said that there might be uh, a, a group here that would help uh, or is trying to uh, organize some kind of a, a knoll. Uh, well, not a party to go take care of knolls, but uh, what was it, a caravan that's uh, being attacked by knolls every now and then? Yeah, I talked to um, 
Augusto earlier. Um, he actually came up to me. I was, I guess, a little flashy. Um, and he invited me onto this caravan. They apparently lost uh, the wizard that they had. Um, yeah, he said he was coming to get uh, her, his um, servant was coming to grab me at around evening time. Um, well, so what time is it about now? Is it like mid-afternoon or? Yeah, at this point it's probably like uh, 1 30, 2 o'clock or so. Yeah, and uh, so I'm guessing we're going to be running into gnomes? Or apparently that was the issue before. Um, now if you're looking to find the gnomes, I guess hang out here and maybe uh, join me when I go uh, to meet uh, what's his name again? Uh, Augusto and his caravan. Okay, uh, if you don't mind uh, may I sit with you? Uh, yeah, yeah, I, I like because I'm kind of I've kind of spread out on this uh, table with my books and my grab and I kind of shove stuff to the side. Uh, yeah, yeah, go ahead. Okay, and I, I sit down, and I, I don't know how well I protrude this or not, but I am super awkward. I, I don't really, I've never sat in this bar before. I've never, I don't really hang out in civilization, so uh, I'm just kind of sitting there, a little bit okay. quiet. Little so bit you're a, you're a little bit one upping me of, I'm a former former orphan in like this high class bar, just kind of like awkwardly waiting. Yeah. So. Weird. Oh yeah. Uh, so there was another guy, um, big, uh, entitled, uh, who was coming with us too. I am here earlier. He'll be, uh, joining me as well, going to the caravan stuff. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right, and, and on that, that's about how the the remaining several hours transpire until uh, until Alan comes back. So, yeah, so radio, um, knowing that the meeting place was back at the Leering Dwarf, uh, you come back. Okay, and, and do I, like, see them? Yeah, and you, and you just notice an extremely large gentleman in, in furs it stands out, um, somehow stands out more than Felix's character. Um, and they're just, they're having the most awkward moment. Like they want to be lovers, but don't know it. <laughs> right, every now go. and then... Go ahead. Oh, sorry. I was just going to say, every now and then I'll look at... Uh maybe a, a book or a piece of paper that Felix might have on the paper and, and just be like, oh, that's interesting. Just trying to fit in. Yeah. Um, I don't even know what I'm reading. Uh, I, I try like to roughly explain stuff, but it's not quite coming through. Some character, what's going on? Yeah. Um, All right, well, seeing these two, I'm going to immediately approach because I'm curious about what's going on here. I'm going to come up to Felix, and I'm going to say, Felix, what a surprise. Ah, Alan. You've, you've made another friend. Ah, uh, like, yeah. I'm apparently a lot more popular here than I ever was, ever. Ah, uh, well, it's good to see you making new friends. Care to introduce me? Ah, uh, yeah, this is um, Branagor. He's uh, come to looking to help out with the gnolls that... Uh, Augusto's caravan was having issue with. Oh, pleasure to meet you, Brandon. It's always good to hear that there's more people willing to help. My name is Alan, by the way. Alan Bumal. Alan, okay. Uh, out of character, can you uh, can you say your last name again? I didn't catch that. Uh, Bumal. Gesundheit. <laughs> <laughs> or uh, Beaumont, also. If you guys check in the journal, you can see how it's spelled. Okay. Uh, Brenegor, it just uh, says, "Good to meet you too." Um, I'm just, uh, I'm just here to help you out uh, with your problem, or might not be your problem, but 
a problem. Uh, the gnolls are pretty much problems for everyone, so don't worry about it. Um, if I may ask, uh, my home, the forests seem more mundane. Uh, I do not know. What is your people? Not particularly familiar with you. My people? Um, from the south, in the forest? Yes, I don't think I've ever encountered someone of your race before. Oh, I am a furbog. Uh, we live in the forest. We don't really have uh, a a community such as this. Uh, we live off the land, uh, and I uh, I know a few of my people, um, but uh, I was raised by a a, a treant, which is a. Uh, uh, I don't know that I don't know any other uh, I don't know anyone else uh other than in the Donner Wood where there are treants but uh I don't really uh, travel much at all. Actually I've never traveled anywhere other than this town. It's fascinating. I've never really gotten out of my home until just recently as well. So uh, I don't believe I encountered a treant before either, but it was a pleasure to have you with us. Have you met our uh benefactor i guess mr agosta i haven't met him today I, I i do know of him i've seen him before uh just haven't talked to him yet today ever since i've been sitting here he seems a good man and definitely seems as though he has the means to take us along with him on his caravan and you've met none of his uh his servants i would presume they were they've been following around everywhere i've seen him so far I don't recall him having any servants, um, but like I said, I've, I've really only uh, kind of know him uh, or know about him just from coming to town in the past. I see. I've only been here for a few days, so perhaps uh, neither of us have a good picture of how the man lives. Well, I'm sure we'll run into him soon enough, though, so... All right, and on that note, um, you see the door swings open, um, and a, sh a short and uh, portly little little dwarf um, kind of saunters in, and he, <laughs> he dusting off off of his coat and trying to look very prim and pop, uh, proper. Scans the room for a few seconds, and ah, comes over to your table. Well. Um, hello, sirs. Um, who, who is, is this your friend? Uh, hello, big man. Hello, how are you? I, I am well. Um, I've come here to collect these two gentlemen. On, for Mr. Augusto. Ah, uh, yes, um, Felix here ran into, uh, uh, Berenagor here, and he was interested in, uh, sorry, uh, he was interested in also helping deal with, uh, the gnolls, so we figured you might be interested in having him along with the caravan, seeing as we're going to be passing through knoll territory. Yes, might be, uh, mutually beneficial for us all. Well, you don't say... Yeah, he, he kind of, uh, saunters up to Branagor and like, hmm, hmm, like eyeballing his biceps and everything. Kind of like does a squeeze here and there. You are a large man, aren't you? Where, where do you come from? As he's, as he's touching me, I, I just, I, I flinch, uh, you know, like, <laughs> like, what are you doing? Don't touch me. I don't say that though. Um. I say, uh, I come from down south. Um, I don't know if I've met you before. I, I'm a furbog from the Donnerwood. Uh, what's your name? My name? My name is uh, Gerald. Nice to meet you. Uh, good to meet you too. Um, would y'all like assistance with, uh, with this caravan? 
Well, it might be hard to say no with a man of your size. I'm sure we'll be that much safer. So why not? Are you ready to go? Sure. If uh, uh, Felix and Alan are ready. Yeah. Uh, I've been well, I've been, prepared for been waiting. Day. Very well. Follow me. And with like a flourish like a behind him, he's got like a very, um, just a very fancy like golden trim gilded uh, cloak on. And uh, yeah, he just kind of opens the door, saunters out, and gives the barkeep a wave as he as he walks out. Uh, he leads you down the what's essentially like the main street of this town, and he comes out and around behind a building, and you see a just kind of like a large section of fenced-in um, field, kind of like a backyard almost. It's, it's fairly large, uh, and you see in the middle there's just some, um, like, kind of half-ass made target practice dummies. <laughs> so he, he leads you over, and at that point, you see kind of slumped up against one of them, you see uh, Cleese's character just kind of hanging out. I don't know if maybe he'd be snoozing or what he would be doing. Um, I have half a tankard in my hand yelling at kids, striking the dummies, telling them to do it right or do it again. And there's no kids around, just to be clear. I know. I know, but uh, I do that because I'm drinking. Reliving my army days. Please, please. Nothing but a bunch of goddamn snot-nosed brats. You'll do better than that or you'll not survive your first encounter. As you're kind of going yeah, off what, on, a, what? on a little Who's... tangent, you see uh, who you know to be Gerald, um, Mr. Augusto's kind of right-hand man. Um, he, he comes up to you and, please, what are you doing? Get out of here. I bow a little unsteadily to him. Uh, sorry, Governor. Just um, reminiscing. Hi. Right. Please, go reminisce somewhere else. My uh, word is, um, you guys might be going somewhere. I'm thinking I might want to leave these parts in a little bit to get away. Well, I mean, if the master has anything heading out, I think it's time I took a walk. Oh, well, that's the spirit. Um, yes, in three days' time, uh, Mr. Augusto has planned for us to leave back to Cremont. Our trade here is not okay. for... For this trip. Hey, well, I suppose it's not as good as a dragon's den, but it'll do. Wake me in three days, then. All right, just sleep. Drain sleep my ale days. and stumble off. Hmm. Very well, then. So, as you can see before us, we have... Uh, a training ground, if you will. And um, I've been assigned to make sure that you're all the, the real deal. So, who would like to go first? If I may ask, how are you going to be testing us? Well, um, you're all good at things. Show me something. Fair enough. I uh, send a fireball at uh, one of the targets. And I'm guessing uh, that. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, these things are made out of like straw and uh, very flammable goods, and they're just kind of like barely held together by twine and stuff. You essentially yeah. explode it into two pieces, and uh, Gerald kind of like, oh, out of the, out of the way. <laughs> well, okay. I'd say that's a pass. He right. pulls out a very tiny, tiny checkboard and just like, or a clipboard and makes a little check mark. Next. 
All right, well, if Felix has had his fun, I'll go up and do my part. Nothing so flashy, but I'll try. And I'll uh, take a few, pull out my longsword. I'll get into a stance, take a few swings, like run a drill with the, um, against the dummy. Ooh, yes, nice form, nice form. Ooh, ah, yeah. yes. And uh, as I finish, I'll lodge the longsword in the side and then pull out my side hand axe and do a quick chop with that as well, just to finish it off. Oh dear. As you take out the hand axe and just decapitate it after you, like, you know, stab the abdomen. Well, that's certainly something. Peace will stumble over to it. My god, what have you done to this boy? Get me some bandages. We're fine, please. We're fine. But he's disemboweled him. Yes. It's hard enough to hold that stuff in. <laughs> Calm yourself, good man. This is only a training dummy. Uh, you should lay off the drink for a bit today. You were a great scarecrow. Scared many a bird you did. Come, my friends. Drink a toast to him. If he's going to offer, I'll take a little bit. Take a quick swig. Ah, there's a lad. A little more of this and you'll be fighting right. Drill. Now I'll stumble over, relieve myself, and lay down and snore. Well, okay. Uh, uh, next, please. Um, big man. And he kind of, he takes like three steps back from the target's dummies. And go. Um... Uh ever since uh felix cast that uh that fireball i i just i started not panicking but i was just i've never seen that that happen before uh so uh i don't freak out but um i i get the idea of what's going on so uh let me see if this works i will uh is there a Dummy that has not been hit yet? Yeah, there's several dummies that have not been hit yet. There's probably about a half a dozen of them, and there's like a decapitated one and a blown up one now. Okay. <laughs> I'll just be like, uh, this is about the only thing I can do. I, I use it to make campfires. And I don't know how this is going to work with the target dummy, but it has to make a, a DC 13 dexterity save. Well, given the fact that it's an inanimate object, I don't believe that it succeeds its dexterity save to get out of the way. So, yeah. Um, so, uh, you see uh, Gerald kind of take a gasp like, oh! oh! And he looks like from you back to the thing, back back to you, back to it a couple of times. And bravo, bravo. So yeah, it just erupts into a huge flame and like a, a very, uh, it's more of a burst than like a normal bonfire because just it's like everything in there is so compact and so flammable. There's just like one, pretty much one big like and then a dull, and then it goes until there's essentially just like the stump, the, the post. I'm going to give some polite applause and a quiet cheer for him. Go up and pat him on the back afterwards. Thumbs up. <laughs> my, my. Okay. What a catch we have here. Mr. Augusta will surely be pleased. Yes. Well then, new recruits. He kind of goes and he like he goes to pat you all. Good job, good job, good job. He goes up to Brandon Gordon. He, he can only like hit his thigh. Hmm. Yes. Well, I will let Mr. Augusto know. Um, we are staying at the Leering Dwarf. Um, and we will cover any expenses for the party. Uh, food, lodging, what have you. And in three days' time, we will set out. Ooh, I hear expenses and lodging. 
Sounds good, Governor. I'll stumble towards the dwarf. Yes. And this is Mr. Cleese. He is, um, well, his company, I suppose. He will be one of your compatriots. Salamanities, Alan. Hello. Hello. I'm Alan Bumal. It is a pleasure to meet you, Mr. Cleese. Sound like a nobly type. The fancy name. Where are you Indeed. from, boy? To the south, across the uh, across the bay. Uh, uh, it's really came into these lands. All righty. And what about you, Mr. Tree Stump? Where are you be from? Uh, I sort of chuckle when he when he calls me that, and uh, <laughs> I'm like, I'm I'm from nearby. It's uh, the south part of the Donner Wood. Uh, one of the wood beams area. Okay. So, what do you do in the woods? Besides, see if bears shit there. Ha! Uh, but I just, uh, I, I'm a, uh, that's where I live. That's home. Mm, yes. It's, uh... Well, I'm, I'm, I'm very busy as, uh, Gerald cuts in. Uh, I will let Mr. Augusto know, and I will see you in three days. Let's go over to the dwarf and hoist a drink in honor of our benefactor. Good day, Charles. Maybe some food too. I think I ate a day or two ago, maybe. And while you're while you're just kind of trailing off, mumbling that to yourself, um, Charles just kind of skitters off. Um, what about you, my? Fiery friend who shoots fire from his fingertips. Where do you uh, have him? Felix is the name. Uh, I come from Transport. Big city to the west, or the east. Felix. Oh, I knew a Felix back when I was a youngster. Used yeah. Quite a lot we did. Oh, it was glorious. Many, many times we've broken bones and bloodied noses. Well, I don't know about uh, breaking bones, but ah, it's always fun. I I can... <laughs> you fix them soon, and you're good to go. So let's go partake, shall we? Nope. Oh, sure. Indeed, a good night to celebrate our new employment. Hmm. All right. Oh, yes. So you guys make your way back to the leering dwarf and. Just a just a motley crew, just just a mess compared to everybody else. Everybody in here is like swanky, just high class. And then, uh, you know, just you guys, and you see one or two other people that Cleese recognizes as uh, also guards of the caravan. Um, just one of them has leathers, one of them has like a chain shirt, um, and just have a some weapons like swords whatever strap strapped to their belt and just kind of drinking and you know at this point it's still like whatever 2 30 or so i mean not a lot of time has passed so 2 30 maybe three o'clock um oh actually no you waited till supper time so yeah at this point yes it's like it's like supper um so it's probably closer to 4 45 to 5 30 ish region um, so you see a lot of higher class people and then just, you know, you motley crew. Hoist my mug to them as I drain it. They, they kind of, you know, they, they know you pretty well at this point. So they, they give you a shout like, Hey, who's that over there? Uh, you see the one that was in the leathers. He comes up and kind of claps you on the shoulder, Cleese, and kind of whispers in your ear. 
Who are these guys? Uh, I don't know. Some new meat to feed the gnolls when they attack. Ah, uh, they'll either learn what I need to teach them, or they won't. Yeah. Either way, you know, they won't they replace my them. crew. Well, you know, it'd be nice to find a couple of gnolls and take out a few aggressions. Yeah, I hear you. We'll see. They look promising, if nothing else. I can run faster than at least two of them, I think. So, we're good. While they're whispering, I'm going to kind of turn to them a bit and say, uh, since they're just like whispering there, I'm going to be like, hello, good sir. I was like, what is your name? Uh, he hello. Um, well, my name, my name is, hold on here, let me consult my notes. Uh, I know too much of the ale. It does the same to me now and then, but it's nice to forget. The name's Hagger. You're Hagger, yourself? it's good to meet you. My name is Alan. Alan Beaumont. Ah, Be Beaumont. Sounds kind of familiar. Anyway, Hagger. Hagger Bodwin, at your service. It's good to meet you. I'd be surprised if you knew my family, but perhaps you know another family by the name from far away, across the bay to the south. Ah, oh, well, I haven't made it down that far, but... Eh. Maybe it's a common name. Who knows? Not exactly uncommon, but... Uh, if I had to guess, you are mistaken in uh, thinking I'm anyone that you might know. Sorry. So how do you know uh, Mr. Khaleesi here? Well, we work together for some time now. I see. What exactly is it you do? I haven't really um, spoken too much to Mr. Khaleesi here before we got into the, uh, into the bar here. Well, I mean, would have thought you guys known by now, but, you know, just protect the, protect the cargo protect the Augusto, and huh, that's about it. Ah, I see. Apologies. I didn't realize that um, you were all part of the guard. Ah, yeah. Quite he practically time. owns the town. Everybody almost works for him indirectly. Again, my apologies. I've only been here a few days. Most have been keeping to myself. So how long have you uh, worked for Mr. Augusta? Ah, uh, I don't know. What do you think, Cleese? Going on three, four years now? Mm, yeah, I don't know. How many days have I been sober? <laughs> Not many. Yeah, yeah, about that. Uh, take it he's a good man, then, if you've been working for him for so long. That or a particularly successful man. One of he the pays two. on time. That he does, my friend. That he does. Lavish with his inducements. And I hoist another mug. He hoists it right back. To Augusto. I, the best caravan master in town right now. To new employment. And I raise a mug with him. That's the spirit. I'm drinking uh, this fine dwarven ale. Renegar, are you and me just awkward in the corner? Pretty just much, yeah. Like, I, I don't drink, so uh, I'm just, like, drinking some water. Yeah, I'm 17. I haven't had much, like, water. 17 oh. and poor, so not super experienced with it either, so. Well, uh, yeah. Gerald Ger said that he pays the tab, so you guys are pretty much all set, whatever you want. Come on, boy, have a drink there. It won't harm you. It's better than water. There's no little monsters living in it that make you sick. Alcohol kills them, you know. Kills them dead. Yeah. It's like those bastards in the army who got my team. What are you drinking, Felix? How are you also drinking water? Uh, I, uh, I guess I'll have beer. 
Then I go up to like the bar and order beer. Give him a, d- give him a ale, a good ale? stout dwarven ale. Uh, sure. Then I go and grab one of those from the bar. Girls will be impressed when you drink that, there, boy. The bartender oh. kind of gives you like a, hmm, like a squinty kind of look, and then, bah, and he goes and just fills something something up. I mean, you don't drink, so you really have no idea what it is. Um, and he just shoo, big foamy glass slides it over to you. I go back over to the group and take a sip. I'm just gonna give him a smart not exactly smart but a uh, bit of a knowing smile encouraging one a cask yeah. for my tall friend here yeah go ahead and uh uh felix just make a uh, a constitution check <laughs> uh just um, a few uh, normal ability <laughs> check okay <laughs> yeah so i mean it it tastes like shit i mean why would anybody want to drink this you have no idea but uh, you you managed to you managed to get it all down, and by the end of it, uh, you know the lights are dancing. You're you're feeling pretty good. Yeah, you now see why we drink it. It was, it was a decent it was a decent sized glass. Oh yeah, yeah. I can uh, I can see the uh, appeal to this. Mm, good lad. I'm just kind of reminding you for you. I'm gonna raise my glass to you just a bit. Oh, uh, yeah, I do the same in response with an empty glass. Oh, we can't have that. Barkeep. <laughs> uh, sure. Yeah, this whole time I'm not cool. exactly slamming these glasses back. I'm taking my time with the alcohol. Just going to see how long uh, Felix keeps going with this. Yeah, I mean, I don't really. Get it? I'm just kind of. I mean, it doesn't taste good to me, so I'm not like pounding them back. But I'm also like a super lightweight, and this, I'm guessing this is fairly strong stuff that uh, yeah. that Cleese has kind of poured in me towards. So uh, I yeah, also I, use it to strip the paint off the wagons. It's good stuff. I, I, yeah, I can. I can see that definitely stripping paint. Yeah, it's like a a thick honey mead. It's almost it's almost like a like I don't want to say a syrup, but it's like cloyingly thick. Yeah, annoyingly thick. It's a good, okay. good term. So yeah, so you guys uh, have a pretty pretty good evening um all paid for and um i don't know what any if you guys are looking to explore more over the next couple of days or if you just want to fast forward what you i I think think. um i vote we go sleep this off for two days and then um, get ready to go unless someone needs equipment or something uh yeah speaking of that i was actually going to make a very quick purchase of just some regular clothes, because I've been wearing like fine clothes these whole time, pretty much. But since we're going to be actually going out and traveling, I'm going to pick up a pair of common or a set of common clothes so I can uh, pack my nicer clothes away. Yeah, I got okay. I got nothing I need to really do. Uh, by the way, how much uh, SP is it for a GP? I'm just going to, oh, is this just going to come out of the uh, the caravan funds since it's so cheap? Yeah, you can find somebody to to hook you up. Okay, then. Yeah, I'm just doing that. Just In this world, it's money. tens, is it? Like dimes, nickel, uh, these dimes for copper, silver, gold? Yeah. So there's, yeah, copper, silver, gold, and do you know do you know how much is equal to what? Or... Um, so isn't it like 10, 10, 10, 10 copper? Yeah, 10 copper, 1 silver, 10 silver, 1 gold. For electrum for a gold for a quarter, basically. Yeah. So it's um so copper is like one copper, 
uh, I believe is equal to 10 silver, which is equal to 100 gold. And then there's a platinum. Um, there's yeah. 10 above that, I think. Yeah, so it's like... Uh, yeah, it's Essentially, tenths. yeah, copper is cents, silver is like tenths of gold, and then there's gold, and then platinum is 10 gold. So yeah, anyway, yeah, that's no problem to acquire. You you just let them know it's on Augusto's tab, and they're like, oh yeah, they're right on it. Okay, great. Then I think that's all the um, equipment I need to pick up. Okay, so no problem. And anybody else looking to um, do anything? Uh, uh, the grand board's good. I'm going to wake up with a hangover the next morning and then do some research that I should probably drink and figure out that I should probably drink a lot of water <laughs> next time I drink. Uh, no, don't need anything. And now you know. Lesson learned. Yeah. Knowing is half the battle. Woo! All right, so you spend the next couple of days, you know, having a good time, just exploring the village a little bit and preparing yourself, taking it easy, um, and, you know, getting fat on Augusto's dime. And, uh, yeah, so several, a couple days later, three days later, um, you guys get ready to head out. So you see there's a hustle bustle kind of at the, at the edge of town where um, all the, the caravan, all the carts and everything are being pulled together and all the supplies are getting ready you see there's just like some bulky guys just like huh, 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 like throwing throwing sacks throwing all sorts of stuff in the back of some of these and uh, just handling the horses stuff like that I show up stone cold sober and look at them questioningly um are you guys so I believe we were introduced last night when um, Mr. Gerald introduced us to you as he was qualifying that we were uh, sufficient to help in guarding the caravan. Last night? Uh, what day is it? Sorry, not last night. A few days ago. Okay, so what day is it now? Uh, I believe it's the day, yeah, I was just going to say it's the day that we are <laughs> departing. But, uh, what is the actual day? Yeah, oh. so the, uh, I just use, like, our calendar, Gr Gregorian, Gregorian, right? Calendar? Yeah. Um, so it is Thursday. Oh, man. Um, I look for my friend with the caravan. Is he around? Uh, at first glance, he's not, um... I mean, you could you could go and look around for him. He's just he's not right did, there when you take. A did I here. miss the first caravan, or are we still on the same month? Yeah, we're still in. Uh, are you saying I just that, look like, in character. Yeah, yeah, oh, in character. Sorry. I'm like, um, um. So it's Thursday. Uh, which Thursday? I uh, all right. I guess we're going. Finally, the day. All right. Yes, this is a uh, Mr. Augusto's caravan, as far as I'm aware. Yeah, okay. it's the right one, I guess. All right. Oh, let's do the job. Where's the caravan? I look around to find uh, what's his name, uh, Gerald. Gerald. Yep. Um, you see, there's like a really fancy coach in the in the very front. And you see uh, Gerald kind of going in and out from time to time. You see um, the other kind of like bulkier gentleman that was with Augusto that day. Um, kind of like loading things up and, and doing the same thing. Just to hustle bustle like everybody's getting the final preparations ready to go. I'm going to walk yeah. over. If yeah. I we don't directly see anyone like uh do we see like sorry 
do we see Augusta just like out of his caravan, or is he just no, not you, to be seen right? No, you just see them them going in and out of the caravan, the in and out of like the coach. It's in the front, the caravan. All right, well, if uh, no one else is going to go around anywhere, I'm going to start approaching the um, the coach to see if Mr. Augusto is inside, see if we can make ourselves of use right now before we leave. Yeah, I'm going up with, uh, with uh, Alan. Yeah, uh, Augusto and uh, the, the other bulkier gentleman, they see you as you approach, and the bulky one just kind of like, you know, he's holding just a couple of, of bags, it looks like luggage of some sort, up over his arm, and he's just watching, and you see uh, Gerald come over. Yes, uh, how can I help you? Welcome. It's like, good morning, Gerald. We're just hoping to uh, make ourselves of some use before we head off. Is there anything that needs to be done? Or perhaps we should just approach some of the um, other workers here, just to help where we can? Uh, yes. Is there anywhere you want us? Well, um, as long as you're helping, I, I guess. Um, yeah, I, I would go talk to some of those gentlemen over there. And he points you over to, like, you see just the bulky, like, there's a couple, essentially two or three, like, just wicked jacked shirtless dudes that are just like, huh, 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 just making a, uh, like a conveyor belt kind of, like, tossing stuff into a like three quarters full cart right now well if that's where i need i'm gonna start approaching them and i'm uh, gonna call out to them it's like do you need any help over there with loading they they don't respond at first because they're kind of like uh you know they're right into it they're like oh, 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 oh. they got a really very quick and efficient uh system going on you hear one of them Hold, and they t t t throw the last one in, in the cart, and look over to you. One of them comes over and he, like wiping his hands. He's like super sweaty. Yeah, uh, what's going on? Uh, what can I do for you? Uh, Gerald just sent us over. Said that if we wanted to help to approach you, uh, you seem to have quite the system. But uh, if you need any help here with another caravan, or if you know anyone else here that might need some help. Uh, more than happy to. Yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, we got plenty of carts. Yeah, we're finishing up this one, and yeah, I suppose. All right, come with me. You I'm two just finish. Follow finish. Uh, and he he walks over, um, and th there is quite a few carts. There's probably like ten or twelve carts in this convoy. And he brings you down towards the end of the line, and. Um, Let's you know. All right. So there's quite a few empty barrels in here. I'm going to need you to go over, go to the Leering Dwarf. They usually stockpile all our stuff. Um, we're going to want to fill half of these with water, about a quarter with ale, and then the uh, the rest of them we're going to stuff with rations. Should, should hold us over. It's only about two and a half day journey or so. All right. Do you want us to take the whole cart with us over there, then? Yeah, that'd probably be the quickest way. Just whatever okay. you do, make sure you mark what's what. All right, we'll do. And uh, if that's it, I'm just going to call Felix come with me, and I assume uh, Branagor is still with us. I'm not sure where Cleese is right now. Uh, yeah, uh, Branagor will... Uh, help. I can. I think I can actually help a, a good amount with that. Yeah, I'm gonna join, but I, yeah, don't expect much. And uh, assume Cleese is just staying. I'm gonna call out to him, ask him. And say, uh, are you just helping out still with the security, just holding down here, or would you like to come join us with this? Um, no, I think you guys should be be able to handle some water there. We'll be here. Okay, then we'll see you soon. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and hop up into the uh, the driver's seat, I guess. 
and just ask Felix, uh, yeah, Felix and Brandegor if you could just hop on. We'll be on our way. Yep. Okay. I hop in the back. Yeah, I'm up no next up. So you break away from the line and um, you trot over. It's 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 not very far. It's just a, a couple of streets down um, to the Leering Dwarf, and you um, kind of go outside. Um, there is a spot around back where you can see you might be able to pull in. Well, then I guess I'll ease our self in over there and uh, hop out, see if there's a easy access door here in the back to go in and start talking. Yep. Um, there actually, yeah, there's a, a door, and you see, like, piled to the left of the door, there's, like, a um, like a recess in the, in the wall, and you see a couple of, of barrels stacked up, probably, like, a half a dozen or so. And then it's just like a, a screen door and a in a door, a wooden door. Um, the wooden door is open, so you open the screen door and you you walk in. Uh, immediately you you smell like uh, sweet sausage and um, bacon and all the all the breakfast uh, fixings, if you will. And uh, you see the barkeep kind of running back and forth, and he stops and. Hey, what what are you doing here? Are these uh, barrels out back, the ones that are to be loaded in with the caravan? Ah, uh, okay, yeah, that's what you're here for. Yep, hold on, hold on, one sec. And you see him, he runs back out front. Probably, you know, one or two minutes later, um, you see another, another person come back. Uh, yeah, follow me. Do you, do you have your empty barrels? Yeah, I'll I'll start unloading them. Uh, well, the cart that we came with it had empty barrels on it, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'll start unloading those. All right. So you guys have a little convoy going. You're unloading all the empties. Um, and he takes you out back. Um, like around the back, there's like a giant a giant well. With just one of the, um, like the the old school push water water valves, and uh, it says, "Yeah, you can you can fill up here uh, for the water. Uh, if you place the empty barrels in front of the door, we can help you out with the food." And uh, you just give me those. You stack up those empty barrels here. Um, for the ale, and we'll just we have them out back. Just right. swap okay. out. Well, Brandon, of course, since you seem like you're most likely the strongest amongst us, I'm going to leave moving the barrels in and out of the cart to you, um, Felix. If you could uh, just make sure everything is labeled and just manage this, I'll get to work with the well here. Perfect. Right, then uh, I'll get to work, and I'll just haul over the first of the barrels that uh, Brandegor has unloaded and start filling them up with water. All right. It's one of those once you once you build pressure in the pump, um, it it goes fairly quick. Um, so you guys spend a little while doing that. Um, you can see the same gentleman that showed you where everything was. He's like just coming in and out, and he's like opening up barrels, putting just like like cheese wheels and like rationy type food, like jerkies and stuff like that. See, he just fills one up with apples. Um, and you see that as you guys sack up some of some of the empty barrels for like the ale. Um, you stack them up in that recessed area where there was already some stacked, and he has kind of like a a wooden dolly, and he starts he starts bringing out barrels to you of ale. I'm just gonna start chucking them in the the back of the wagon. Felix, are those labeled the uh, the ones with the ale there? Yep. 
everything's labeled, split up correctly. Okay, good to hear. Quarter ale, quarter food, half water. Perfect, perfect. I want to ask the uh, the employee that's uh, helping us. Uh, I just want to ask: Do y'all have a problem with your water being contaminated or making people sick? No, this is some of the best water around, my man. Okay, yeah, I make like. Dwarf. Okay. And he, as as he says that, he kind of rolls his eyes. The best money can buy. I I don't catch his sarcasm. I think he's I think he's being legit. Okay. Well, meanwhile, I'm kind of mining to myself, just keeping on with the water. If we're almost done with it. All right. And so after after you talk to that gentleman, he he goes in for a few minutes and he comes back out and he has a clipboard, and you can see he um, he comes around and he's inspecting everything and he's making tallies of what you guys have taken, things like that, and then he goes back inside. All right, are we about finished up here then, Felix? You've been keeping track of everything, right? Yeah, it uh, looks about right. Um, I go and double check everything, make sure all the barrels are full and the right ratios of uh, food to water to beer, to ale. All right. Everything seems to be in order. Okay. If yep, that's all looks case, good. Yeah, I'm just going to help Brandagoy load the last few in then, since I'm probably done with the water then. And then uh uh i'll go in and just make sure that the uh the dwarfs they know that we've taken everything that we're heading now yeah and you um again the bartender's running back and forth right now it's pretty busy as you recall it being breakfast hour hey uh got everything you need uh yep i believe we've taken all that we were supposed to so hope you have a good day there's nothing else you need from us correct no, we're all set. All right, have a good day then. We'll be on our way. And then I'll just head on out and hop up on the cart. You too. Yep. He gives you guys like a, a wave and then wipes his, wipes his hands on his apron and walks back into the establishment. All right, Felix, Brandagor, you ready to go? Yeah, let's set up. Yeah, I'm in the back. Right, perfect, then I'll spur the horses on and we'll get back to the caravan. Sounds good. Yep, so it uh, just takes another couple of minutes to go a few streets down. You pull back into the slot. Um, pretty pretty good for you. You're, you're really good with horses, um, so there's no checks or anything. And yeah, and you see at this point, like quite a few of the carts have been filled, and these three guys are just going at it still. They're just like, hoo, 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 just throwing. There's like sacks and all sorts of stuff. Uh, oh. While we're on the way back, uh, I'm going to just ask Alan and Felix. Uh, Hey, um, that Cleese guy, does he really sleep for three days at a time? Hey, I, I mean... I'm sure Mr. Cleese was up and about when you didn't see him. Though, I wouldn't be surprised if he spent much of those three days sleeping off all the alcohol he's been drinking. He seems fine now, though. Yeah, it hit me pretty hard, and he drank a lot more than me, so... Okay. Uh, Maybe? <clears throat> Brandy Gorge is really gullible. And he, like, I know I, uh, Cleese said earlier that he was sleeping for like three days or something. So I, I it oh. just puzzled yeah. me. Okay. Well, then, if we're uh, pulled in, I'm going to hop off in the, again, seek out Gerald. 
at this point you see they're just loading up the last couple of items of luggage it's more like Jarrell just like pointing in the in the uh, other manservant it just has like a bunch of stuff and he's just like Ugh, like a pack meal just like throwing it all in Well, I'm going to approach and just let him know. It's, uh, grow up. Good to see you again. We've uh, gathered up all the food, water, hail that you requested. Ah, well, I'm, I mean, I didn't request it explicitly, but um, it seemed to have been a big help. Thank you. Perfect. Are we getting on our way soon, then? Yes, we should set out in... Uh, Probably about a half an hour, 45 minutes or so, depending on he as he like leans over uh, like next to your thigh and is he looking at all the the buff dudes just loading up all the carts. Depending on that's how kind of creepy. They can do it. That's kind of creepy leaning against your thigh and watching all the buff dudes. No, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, no, he's like looking past. It's just because uh, Alan's a human. And... Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So. All right. Well, then, uh, how are we coming along with the caravan? Are any of these uh, just empty for us to ride in, or are we just walking along? Um, a little of both, I guess. Um, whatever, whatever you prefer, as long as we're safe. Yeah, uh, we rotate there. Sometimes you'll ride at the front, sometimes the back, sometimes you'll walk along the middle. All depends on the terrain and who's ready for a rest. Prepare to get lots of exercise there, boys. And there we go. That's why we keep you around, Cleese old boy. All right. Thank you. Well, then, we have nothing else to do. Uh, I've been sitting around, haven't walked too much. I guess I'll just take up here at the side of the convoy and just be ready to go. <laughs> Yeah, I'm going to find somewhere on, like, the caravan. I can kind of, like, sit on top of a bunch of stuff and kind of get a kind of higher-up view. Just, like, watching. All right. Sounds good. So you guys just take everything in, and you see as the uh, all the loaders finish up and um, go around, and they, they check all the... Um, all the either saddles for the for the few loose horses or they check all the reins they, they just you know just do an, a once over to everything make sure everything is all good and then a few of them they jump into like a f couple of carts that are just empty and you, you see um, at that point one of them comes up and just checks everybody and nods and ready to go. Yep, I'm ready to go. Whenever the caravan is ready to settle. Yep, whenever ready. Sounds good to me. Yeah. All right. Well, good. Keep your eyes to the hills. I don't know if you if you new recruits know, but. We ran into some danger last time. We'll be sure to keep our eye out. We did hear about the uh, the null problem that's been going on. Good. Well, at least you know. All right, everybody. We're headed out. And he kind of like, you know, runs back to one of the empty carts where he gets in and... Um, Everybody kind of slowly starts chugging along. So, uh, at this point, is there anything that anybody wants to do while you're traveling? I mean, obviously you're keeping your eyes open, but um, like, are any of you sitting in the carts doing things, or is it just everybody's walking? We're all keeping an eye out. Yeah, uh, I'm gonna like. Uh come to pace with, I assume the, uh, some of the drivers at least were the ones handling the horses and, uh, I'm just going to come to pace next to one of them and just, uh, chat with them a bit, ask them about how they, uh, have been taking care of their animals. Yeah. Uh, okay. So yeah, you pass a little bit of time and 
go back and forth about um, you know animal handling care horse care and um, you know just the regiments that they that they use and like oh we use this kind of oat and blah 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 Yeah, okay, yeah, I'm pretty much, yeah, I was pretty much just doing that the past time, so if anyone else has anything to do. Yep. Yep. I'm just going to take my tools and start, you know, fixing little tack and, and do some armor repairs for people, things like that, using my mending. All right. Yeah. Oh, great. So I'm just chilling up top. And I just want to keep a, an eye out for anything suspicious but i also uh for a specific reason i want to look for any animals or beasts i've never seen before and if i see them i just want to take note of it okay go ahead and make a perception check uh 17. yeah so uh and I'm going to move you guys as we go here, but yeah, you keep an eye out and um, you definitely mark there are several species of birds that you're not really used to as you get a little bit away from the forest. You're used to more of the wildlife that's, you know, deep in the forest and occasionally you come here, but now that that's what you're looking for, um, you're not just here on a mission. You see different kinds of uh, swallows and things like that. Okay. All right. So we're going to uh, start our journey here, I guess. All right. So what I'm going to have all of you do is uh, I'm going to have Alex, Radio, and Ed roll a D6. Don't add anything, just roll a d6. That's a slash r1 d6, right? Yeah. Or, or just the dice roller up in the corner. Oh, forgot about that. All right. So the day passes fairly uneventfully. Um, you guys are just very vigilant about it. You're looking out, making sure that everything is is good. And uh, at this point, it's it's evening time. The the whole day has gone by. Um, finally, you guys come to a good a good spot to rest. And uh, you just hear from the back, "Halt! All right, everybody, get out the camping gear. Let's go." And you see the uh, the the whole convoy just kind of hustle bustle unloading stuff from the carts and setting up camp All right well i'm gonna move out towards like the side of where everyone is camping i'm gonna lay out some stuff um do they have like tents that they're like handing out to people oh yeah there's there's essentially just like a a small pile that has uh, probably a half a dozen of them. Well, uh, uh, Felix and uh, Branagor, if you guys want, we can take one of these tents, move out to the side, so that we can uh, maybe keep a watch around as we settle in here for the night. Sounds like a good idea. Well, I'm going to start, yeah, I'll gather up some supplies, carry them on over, uh, start up a fire maybe, just a small one for us. Okay, I'll help set up the tent. Yeah, I'll light a fire. Yeah, no problem, considering you can literally shoot fire from your hands. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just imagining this. I'm a, I've got my tinderbox out, like, slowly trying to coax one out. Felix just comes up, blasts it. Let it poof. Very yeah, useful tool, it. my friend. Not had too much encounters with mages, so yeah. Well, it's uh, last couple of years have been 
fun with this stuff, so. Yeah, thank you. And, uh, yeah, so everybody is working hard, getting up the tents, getting ready. Um, you see some of the other protection there just on the perimeter. They're looking out. Um, you see one or two of them kind of walk off into the into the forest a little bit and then come back a few minutes later just making sure that there's nothing out of the ordinary I want to just ask everyone in the group uh, just go up and say uh, do y'all have enough uh, of provisions um, I know we packed uh, water do y'all have enough food uh, well, I have food on me, but um, may go grab some from the uh, supplies instead, since that's a bit fresher than my traveling rations. Yeah, same. Okay. I go up to the campfires and eat some of the stew they're making. I'll go up and uh, go sit with him after grabbing my own bowl. So, Cleese, uh, how do you guys normally do the uh, protecting? Do you set up uh, just like different groups around the edge, just occasionally poke out into the forest, just making sure everything's clear? Yeah, pretty much. We have a few scouts that may um, jump into the woods a little bit for a few minutes, take a look around, and come back. Mostly, you know, we just wait our turn to stay up the watch there, and you know, they'll give us a couple of groups, you know, a few people from each group guarding the front and back. You know, with our group, we may have two of us up for, you know, a third of the night and also take middle watch, and then the last two will take the last half there. Just so we're not always on the same watch all the time. All right, Standard then. guard duty. Just to make sure, you know, when you're on your watch, you know, keep your back to the fire so it's not interfering with any night vision. And um, you know, if you think you see something, don't be don't be afraid to wake someone else there to verify it. You know? Now, don't go all up in arms and say, "Oh my God, we're under attack!" But you know, if you think something's out there, even if it's just a squirrel rustling, it's always nice to have another person up and ready, just in case it isn't. Of course, of course. So, Brandagor, you haven't traveled much. Is this the farthest you've been from your home so far? Uh, no, we're actually closer to my home right now. Um, it's uh, on that forest down south. If you Can we see the forest down south? Because uh, right now we're on a hex, uh, or a plane hex, and I was just wondering uh, if... Cause Which is, yeah, is what six miles? Yeah. 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 You can just point whichever one is whichever one is your hex. I didn't know if it was the heart or I know you said it's towards the south. Yeah, it's uh, we're like right by it here. I'll just point it out. There you go. Yeah. So I say, yeah. Um, this is actually uh really close to my home. Ah, oh, okay. I didn't realize that. I thought you were a bit farther east. Oh, is there much uh, out here in these forests? Other than the uh, the knolls that have been coming in recently, is there anything out there that we should be concerned or watching for? Uh, the forests are usually pretty quiet. Uh, partly uh, because of what my people do. We are guardians of the forest. If you want to call it that uh we just try to maintain balance all right that's good to hear so hopefully uh not too many creatures out there and felix is this the farthest you've uh been out to the south oh yeah by far i've only been before this within a couple miles of uh transport Let's see, well, new things for us. Did you come through this way, uh, Alan? When you came up through this, no, um, no. across the bay, I came uh, 
not from this part of the uh, area. I came more from the uh, southeast of Shen. Mm. Didn't land in the uh, closest area, but the uh, swamps weren't too popular with settlement, so moved a bit farther to the east is where the ship that I was aboard landed. Makes sense. Nothing else is going on. I'm just going to start eating my food in peace then. Yeah, I think we're just chewing the shed and eating. Yeah, so you guys uh, pass the evening time um, just, you know, having your fill and talking and you see quite a few of the people taking out. Uh, they have their own gaming sets. There's cards and there's dice and whatever. And, uh, yeah. People settle down after several hours once it once the sun completely crests over and it's really just the light of the fire that's um, what your vis visual range is and you see um, there's all the protecting roles I'm just scouting out taking perimeters so I'm gonna take a piece of advice then as you're saying, and I'm just going to sit facing away from the fire for pretty much the rest of the night. Just kind of watching out to the forest if there's anyone nearby, just some small talk and whatnot. Until uh, we're really officially to take up the guard. Yeah, I'm just chilling by the fire, reading a book while I can. Light. Yeah, I'll just sit and uh, play my flute. Tradition of a true veteran, I take a nap. Great. And so, and now, are you guys staying up all night, or how are you just gonna try and swap out, or? Is there an oh. assigned schedule for the different guards, or how many guards are with us besides us? There is. Let's see. At this point, there's four others. Four other guardsmen, one of which you've already met. Well, the, well, I mean, you've met them all, please, but um, one of which was the one at the bar. That hung out oh, with we'll for we'll work a schedule where two of us are up for um, two hours, and then um, another two take middle watch, and then two on the last watch there, and um, we'll rotate with them. Oh well, uh, Felix, since you and uh, Branagor were sitting. Up in the uh, caravans for most of the day. Uh, I'm gonna take a nap also while Cleese is then, and uh, let them take the first third if you guys are okay with that. That's fine with me. Yeah, that sounds good. And then, All right. That's All right. case. Yeah, okay. I'll just go ahead and make a perception check. Keep an eye on the skies too. <laughs> <laughs> Brandagor is laying down a pretty good flute jam, but besides that, it seems pretty pretty uneventful. Yeah, I'm not used to this whole watch thing. Yeah, neither am I. Clearly. Yeah, so several several hours pass. Um, it, everything's fine. There's no nothing that you guys uh, see notice and uh, swaps out to the next. So I'm not sure, uh, doing a two, two by two, right? You're swapping out two, two uh, people keeping watch. Yep. So I don't know if you're swapping total. out with NPCs or PCs, or we'll say that you guys, ho however order you decide. Yeah, we'll, we'll let the PCs have them, or the NPCs have the middle watch. That way we get our uninterrupted as much as we can breaks for spells and those of us that need it. We'll do first and last watch of the day there. Sounds good. Yeah, I'm fine with that. So, uh, go ahead and make a perception check, you two, at the last watch. <laughs> oh. 
<laughs> what? Oh, yeah, good. I mean, you're being as as vigilant as you can be, but you you haven't noticed anything. Uh, I'm just like case, it. Yeah, I'm just gonna turn to Cleese and say, uh, "Quiet watch is a good watch." That's right. Take me when it's over. Just kidding. Oh, that's it. It's um, it's the morning now as we're coming to the end of the watch, right? And everyone's waking up. Dylan, you there? Yeah, hold on. Oh, here's here. So, Alan, it was Alan and Cleese was second, or last watch, right? Yep. Yep. Uh, Cleese is kind of like, like he, he's just kind, he's only half there, really, if, if that. Um, you see my head drop to my chest and jerk up guiltily now and then. One of those where he goes, you, you swear that you hear something else. And uh, as you're having that thought, you see a couple of shadowy figures just fucking beeline from the forest line and just come out <laughs> snarling at you and growling at you. And I'm going to go ahead and ha they're going to do their thing as they surprise you and then we're going to roll initiative so you can roll initiative now if you'd like so this is just <laughs> going to be for alan and for uh cleese are you running a map for us here or are we just going to yeah use this? i'm gonna i'm gonna uh make a like a battle map just for now oh shit good reflexes boy yeah. So yeah, as that ha that's happening, I'm gonna give Cleese a bit of a kick to the side, just a light one, be like, yeah. just scream out, "Nose!" So you two are gonna be at the edge of the campfire here. I should have had you do it on the, um, yeah, I didn't track it, damn. So 16 and 21, I'll do it real quick. So the gnolls are going to go first, and then it will be normal, normal turn. Okie dokie. And it, it's about 10 o'clock, so I'm going to say we'll, we'll stop there for like a 10-minute break. Everybody, like, go to the bathroom, do whatever they're going to do, and then we'll pick up at that point. Okay. Okay. Sounds Commercial good. break. Right, Time guys. to insert edge yeah. here. <laughs> All right. Yeah, it was a few. So far, so good for our first time. Besides there you go. Works for me. Let's go. And the, uh, let's go. You said the gnolls once we come back. The gnolls are going to be going first, like yes. irrespective. Okay. Right. They'll get they the surprise come... attack. Correct. Unless you have the alert feature. Uh, no, I do not think I so. Nope. Yeah, don't have it. All right. See you in a few.
think let's call it. I pretty much sat here. I didn't have anything to do. So I'm still here. Yep, I'm here. Oh, I'm back. Yeah, I don't know if the um, if the music is royalty free on the jukebox. I have to check that. Hmm. I wouldn't Twitch just uh, like pull the stream and you'd know. Well, if they noticed, I mean, does the bot pick it up? If yeah. If not, do we care? <laughs> right. It's usually pretty good about picking up like popular songs, uh, but the worst that happens is just sections of the stream get muted. It doesn't pull the video. Yeah. Oh, I just saw your message uh, on Discord. I'm back. Okay, I was just making sure. All right. So that's I a I did have. Yep. Continue. I, I did just have one question about preparing spells. Do you want us to like whisper you uh, our prepared spells, uh, or how do you want to do that? Um. Yeah, there, there is a spot in the character sheet where you can set all the spells to prepare and the ones that have like a red dot. Okay. I'll have to set that up uh, later. I'll do it like yeah. before next week. Yeah, it's fairly, it's fairly easy. I can show you real quick after. Yeah, it's just a little checkbox. All right. So, that's it. We're back. Okay. So, the gnolls are just... They're just charging out of the brush at you. Um, and one of them comes at each, each of you. Oh, sorry. Hang on. I might have to refresh here real quick. No problem. Yeah, I just said your connection was interrupted. Stuff. There we go. I think I'm coming back in now. So, the, uh, yep, he's going to make a bite attack at you, which is uh, an 8, which is a definite miss, and uh, Cleese, one at you as well. Maybe. Yeah, maybe, but... Uh... Uh, I assume a 10 does not hit. No, I got a 16. Okay. And you also, uh, Alan, you have another one. Uh, oh, yeah, natural 20. So just an arrow comes out of the brush and hits you for 8. Okay. That looks like it hurts, boy. Yeah. Good thing I was not. Given the darkness, you can't really. You're not really sure. Like you know, maybe somewhat the direction that it came from, but it's fairly dark, and it just you know came out of the tree. Line, like, Although I suppose if you, yeah, I would just say make it make a perception check. Okay. Yeah. Unfortunately, it's just too too dark. Figured I'd give you the chance just in case you rolled high. All right, so that is there go, and now now starts the turn order. I'm gonna, uh, throw, I'm gonna throw another one on the board and enroll that initiative as well. By the way, I think you've mixed up the uh, what's it called the two. 
uh, me and Cleese's initiative rolls, right? Oh, did I? I thought it was. I think so. Yeah, I rolled 21. He rolled oh, yeah. 16. 17. Or six. I, I got, um, let's go back. What? Initiative. Yeah, I got a 16 for initiative on mine. You just haven't sorted it by order yet. A number. That's all. When you sort by number, he'll be number 20 first. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, that goes. Okay, so are we uh, set to go now? Or... Hello? Uh, no, we do not. No, yeah, sorry. He died. Everybody's dead. TKO. Yeah, it was working just like a. There you go. Okay, well, yeah, seeing as there's one right in front of me, I'm just gonna go ahead and take a slash at him with my sword. Still not getting anything from Dylan. Keep Dylan. By changing your channel on Discord. <laughs> Try.
try like actually like exit. Nope. Um, try doing like the full exit Discord or quit Discord from like the bottom right hand uh, thing in Windows. Or make sure you're like put to push to talk. Still nothing if you're trying to talk. Um, double check all your Discord settings, all your sound stuff. Unplug, maybe replug in your mic. And then recheck all the settings. Ask the other guys if they hear you on the other stream. Hey, first night jitters, we we uh, forgive you. Well, the stream go down too, and that. That kind of janked up everything. That's okay. We'll hang out while you reboot. Man, maybe. So how's everyone doing? Yeah, same crap, different pile. Very good. Where are you guys cool. all from? Yeah. Hi, right, Virginia. Can you? Yeah. I used to live there, Great Falls. Oh, yeah, it's not too far at all. I'm, uh, what's it called? Fairfax County. Oh, there you go. Just around the corner. Mm -hmm. I'm up in Canada now. Oh, it's Yeah. I'm up. 